baptism. When we believed, as he describes in Romans 10, as we believed that God raised him from the dead, and with our whole heart, nothing doubting, nothing wavering, because as James says, he who doubts is as a wave of the sea. Let not that man think he shall receive anything, for a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You know, and, and there's always, and as Paul describes in Galatians, and I believe it may have been chapter five, he says, for, he says, you cannot do the things that you would. He says, for the spirit envies against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. And the two are contrary to one another so that you cannot do the things that you would. That's why he says in uh, Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, because that is the only way that we're able to walk in the faith of Christ. I'm crucified in Christ lives in me is by the mercies of God that are in Christ, that are manifest to us in him. When we believe that he raised Jesus, his son from the dead. So, In that faith, we we have put off the old man, the body of sin. We have been circumcised with the circumcision of Christ. You know, that's what the circumcision represents is the cutting away of the filth of the flesh. And as he describes in Galatians 3.27, as many as were baptized into Jesus Christ have put on Christ or have clothed themselves with Christ. That's that circumcision of Christ why he says in Romans 8 10 Christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is alive because of righteousness you know but we had we through the Holy Spirit as he says in Romans 8 13 if you live after the flesh you will die but if you we through the Holy Spirit put to death the deeds of the body we shall live and that's why he says in Romans 8 14 the following verse that as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the ones born of God. And the King James has, rent, has translated it as children of God, but the, the Greek word actually means just the offspring of one born of. Doesn't say anything about male or female. And it's important to see that because it, it, it gives understanding when you read 1 John, it said, when he says that uh, the one is born of God, does not sin because his seed remains in him and you know modern translators want to twist that because the natural man as Paul said in 2 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 the natural person doesn't receive the things of the spirit of God for their foolishness to him neither can he know them for they are spiritually discerned you know so Anyway, they're they're taking, they're taking, and they're not translating scripture. They're they're interpreting the scripture. They're giving a paraphrase of it, thinking that they're helping the reader when all they're really doing is changing the word of God. And every person shall give account for what they do. But we. As Paul said, prove all things, and that means the translations of the of the Bible, the Word of God. You know, not not every translation is is credible, and in fact, there's there's like we we have to put those things to the test. God's put tools out there, you know, as Proverbs three uh, verse five says. Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all your ways, and he shall direct your paths. You know, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You know, we have to put all of our trust in him. As Jesus said, blessed are those who do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. It didn't say, it didn't say maybe, but we have to hunger and thirst for it. And you know what? 
if we are sincere. As he says in John 7, 17, the one who is willing to do God's will, the one who desires it, the one who wants it, will know concerning the doctrine, the teaching, the word being preached or taught, whether it comes.